I want to salute you, homie, you know, for, for building your own thing and doing your own thing, creating your own platform, your own website. I got one life to live out my dreams, and I'm giving this thing all I got. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I represent the culture. All right, now you're turning up on MrTalaferro.com, shawty. Yeah. All right, as we kick off the Mr. Telefero show, our first guest, he leads his team in scoring, 10th in the nation at 22.4 points per game. He's easily the catalyst of his team, the profound leader of his team, leading his team on the way as they try to make the NCAA tournament. Um, quite frankly, one of the hardest working individual, individuals I've ever seen. We got... UT point guard Kevin Punter in the building. How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I got to thank you for taking the time out to do this interview. I know you're extremely busy. I know, knowing you, I know you'd rather be in the gym right now. Yep, yep. Uh, Coach actually uh, gave me the day off today, so he don't even want me in the gym today. So I'm just, you know, I'm just cooling today. Are you really going to buy by that, though? If, yeah. if you, they say you don't be in the gym, that means Kevin might only work out nah, once now. I don't got no choice. I don't got no What's choice. That? So they kind of, you know, they real strict on me when it uh -huh. comes to that. You know, they want me to really rest. So. Do you think you need the rest? How does your body feel right now at this point? Um, I feel good. I mean, I'm a little tired. I'm not going to lie to you. But um, every time I wake up in the morning, I just feel the urge and need to, you know, do something in the gym. But I know sometimes I need to cut back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I kind of seen the same thing with Josh at mm -hmm. this point in the season. Actually, a little sooner with him last year. I mean, just being the point guard and being the primary ball handler at this point in the season, you could tell he was, you know, it's just the fouls, the double teams, everything was just starting yeah. to wear on him. Is, yeah. You know, is that some of the things you've seen as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, it started uh, in conference play. You know, a lot of teams started picking up and trying to figure out different ways to get me off the ball and trap me and prevent me from scoring a lot of times. Uh, you know, I've seen double teams, box ones. You know, I've seen all different type of defenses thrown at me and just had to adjust to it. Can you take us back? Um, can we go back to the JUCO days and just kind of the early basketball beginnings, mm -hmm. getting to this this point, you know, starting for an SEC school? Yeah. Um, obviously, I started in uh, State Fair College uh, in Missouri. I wasn't always a player I was today. You know, I just pretty much worked my behind off each and every year, got better each and every summer. And I uh, really just worked my way to where I'm at right now. To be honest with you, you know, it's nothing special to it. There's no magic trick to it. It's just really just... Just working every year. I believe the CBS story talks mm -hmm. about you almost giving up on the game yeah. of basketball. I believe it was a conversation with moms. Mm -hmm. How did that go, and what was that about? Yeah, well, that was crazy. I, uh, you know, in high school, you take a uh, SAT score. Some take a ACT score, and I took a SAT score. Uh, when I was in prep school in North Carolina, um, I couldn't get my SAT score, which had prevented me from playing college basketball, obviously. So, um, you know, I didn't know what route to go, so I basically told her, you know, I, I think I'm about done, and you know I was crying, you know all of that, just basically really about to give it up. And she told me um, to think about it and call her back. You know I thought about it for a little minute, ended up calling her back and told her I wanted to stick with it. But I, that that was just a point in time I was I was just frustrated. I didn't know what dream college was. I didn't want to go that route, and you know I just I, I was just blind to to a lot of things. But um, it ended up being the best route for me. So what was the turning point? I mean, just with the worth ethic, because everything I hear about you, people might not know this, yeah. but this guy's practicing before he has practice with the team. He's working extremely hard to get to this point. Mm -hmm. Like, what was the turning point for you as far as your worth ethic? Um, I don't even know to be honest with you. That's something I always had since I was a little kid. You know, I always, I always, I was never really given nothing. You know, I always had to work for everything I got, and that's kind of how I am now and you know I, I see results I see it showing itself but um one thing about me I'm never really going to forget you know how I got here or you know what got me here so me I just stick to you know simple simple rules just you know just continue to work and get better every day can you talk about changing your jumper a lot of speculation about that early on in the season how would that impact you and I believe Coach Barnes reached out to you and told you he wanted you to change your shot can you talk about that adjustment and how hard was it for you yeah uh, I you know, last year I shot, I didn't shoot the way I shot this year in terms of mechanics and stuff like that. But, um, you know, when Coach Barnes had first took the job, you know, he was, you know, watching us work out or whatnot. And he first approached me with, you know, if you want to continue to play basketball after here, then, you know, I think the first thing you should do is uh, change your shot because, you, know, you know, he didn't like it and he just felt like I could have a more, you know, better looking shot rather, you know, than how I shot last year. So, um, 
you know, he started he started working with me with that, you know, and you know, it was a frustrating process. You know, at one point in time I didn't think I really wanted to do it just for the simple fact that I'm a senior in college, I've been doing it all my life while I change it now. But um, you know, I listened to him and stuck with it and, you know, it, it's worked out for me for the best. Speaking of Coach Barnes, can you talk about the impact he's had on you as a player? Um how impactful has it been to be under his leadership and his watch? It's, it's, it's really a blessing, you know. How, how I think is uh, everything happens for a reason. And, um, you know, I, I was placed into a position at the point guard role in which I never played before ever in my life. And, you know, he, he's taught me. I've learned a ton of things from him since he's, took, since he's taken a job. And, you know, I continue to learn a lot about him now. And I've been, you know, playing for him for a while now. So, you know, um, like I said, it's, it's just been a blessing, and I wish I could have been here to play at least one more year with him. Um, he's coached so many of the greats, from, mm -hmm. from Kevin Durant and Tristan Thompson, what he got right now. There's yep. just so many of the greats. Does that add pressure to you, or is it, does that help you in a way? Because you know, because he speaks really highly of you. As a matter of fact, I've been to numerous press mm -hmm. conferences when he just talked about how he, you could be one of the special ones. Yeah. And you know he coached KD and Tristan, like I said. Does that add any pressure to you? Not really. Uh, like I said, I try not to think about it. I could easily think about all the pressure that could really be added on me, and that that probably drive me crazy. But, um... I try not to think about that. Like I, tell, I just try to stay focused, and you know, all that stuff is going to be there. You know, so I try not to focus on that, and just try to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed. To, uh, make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and um, control everything I control. I generally tell people look, the team that, that Kevin's on right now, this team is undersized, mm -hmm. but they can compete with anyone in the country on any given night. Yeah. Do you share that same sentiment? What do you think about the team? That's that you can just just the way how we play, how we compete. You know. Um, we, we may not be the biggest team, but I feel like we're a lot quicker, faster than a lot, than a lot of teams, which gives us the upper hand, you know. you seen Josh Richardson. We brought him up earlier in the interview. Literally, you're doing the exact same thing he had to do last year. You're yeah. the best player on this team. You had to move over to the point guard. Um, last year, you were playing more of the two, yeah. getting your shots off with Josh. You're literally you literally watched that last year, and and that became you this year. Um, for you personally, how has that been? And have you even been able to reach out to Josh and talk to him since he's been with Miami? Yeah, I, I spoke with uh, Rich a, a couple of times since he's been with Miami. You know, not too too often. You know, I'm sure he's busy. I'm busy here, but um, it, it's it's crazy. You know, last year he was, had the point guard role, and you know my role last year I really just wanted to get in where I fit in at. Um, you know, help him out, you know, in terms of having support, you know, other guys he can go to to score the ball. And, you know, it's just it's just crazy how time changed. And, you know, um, I, I'm in this position he was in last year. All right, I pay close attention to you in warm-ups. Now, generally speaking, you're the one laying it in, mm -hmm. never doing anything fancy, trying to get more shots up, get as many dribbles you can in, preparing for the game. Now, your teammates, speaking on Diedrich or, you know, some of the other guys, I see them going crazy with the dunks, and I look at you, and, and sometimes I think, is this frustrating them a little bit? Do I, would I rather my team be getting more shots up? Because you and Devin, y'all seem like y'all in a different mentality yeah. pregame. I mean, pregame, it just depends on the type of player you are. I'm just more the type of player. I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do in the game. You know, floaters, you know, pull-up jump shots, three, you know, just different type of Lay up packages underneath the rim, you know, just, you know, a lot of times dudes be on a layup line, you know, they just, they just want to, you know, just jump, you know, but and ain't nothing wrong with that. But uh, it just depends what type of uh, player you are. You know, there's a few times where I go out there and may dunk, you know, once or twice, but after that I'm back to, you know, what I usually do. Let's talk about you and games now. I'm literally giving you both ends, ends of the spectrum here. I seen you score 36 against South Carolina. Can you talk about getting that hot? And that was such a big win for you guys yeah. at the time. Yeah. They were, I think they were like 19-1 and one at mm -hmm. the time or something like that. That was such a big win for you at the time. Can you speak about hot Kevin and when he when he gets it going and the impact you can have on the game? Um, I, I know for a fact when I get hot, I'm not going to miss. <laughs> you know, uh, when I get into that zone, to be honest with you, when I, when, when I get into that zone, shots I start hitting is really shots that – all shots I shoot is shots I, I work out in practice. So when I start getting hot, all those shots are shots I shoot, you know, when I'm working out in the gym and stuff like that. So, 
you know, which is why I feel like once I get hot, I'm not going to miss because it's always shots I practice and, and repetition on. So, you know, once I get into that zone, it's, it's a wrap. Now, generally, I'm, I'm paying attention to you closely mm -hmm. every game. Usually, first couple possessions, you'll get a look up. You'll just get, it seems like you'll usually go for a jumper early on mm -hmm. just to see you get a feel for the game and everything. Yeah. Um, against Auburn, last time out, you didn't do that. It was, yeah. it was different, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's talk about the four points you had against Auburn. And then, now, let's talk about Kevin, who didn't have it going, so to say, last night, but the team had it going. And I still was able to see a Kevin who was still happy, didn't even play much, much of the game, but I still seen a Kevin that was so happy for his teammates. I think I seen Ray make a hook shot, yep, and yep, he was up yep. cheering. Like, how, now, let's, that, that side of Kevin, what's that like? Just If you don't have it going, how yeah. you can affect the game in other ways? Um, just by being out there, being a leader. You know, I, I don't have to score. I don't have to do none of that to, you know, to affect the game. And last night, my first shot, I believe it rattled in and out. And, um, you know, I was really, I was, to be honest, I was pissed about that because that one was wide open. But um, as the flow of the game was going, everyone, you know, everyone was clicking. So, like I said, I mean, I just, I kind of just fit right into it. Um, I missed a few shots I normally make, but uh, I really don't trip about it. But, um, you know, I just, I just continue to play. And, you know, I got in foul trouble, so I was on the bench most of the first half. And everyone was clicking. I think we was up 11 at half. A second half came. I think I picked up a quick third foul. Coach took me out. I mean, everything was just flowing, you know. And I came into the game, I didn't even want to look to score, you know. I mean, it was we was already winning. I was just trying to get some movement going. And there's no need to try to come in and just try to put numbers up. And, you know, I, I was happy for everybody. Kevin, personally, if y'all season ended today, you got to say your biggest win coming back from 21 against Kentucky. Yep. Can you, I seeing your emotion after the game. I watched it. You were just so emotional after that game, that big win, being doubted. You had people leaving at halftime, yeah. coming back. Can you speak about that win and how big? And I heard you say everybody wants to beat Kentucky. Yeah. Can you speak about how big that win was for you? I didn't even know people left at halftime. To be honest with Some you, some people left at halftime. I didn't, I didn't yeah. even know that. But um, you know, we we kept fighting. You know, Coach Preach. You know, you know, we down twenty one, but you gotta continue to fight and show where your toughness is at and with us we we continue to, you know, hang around. We hung around, hung around and you know, we hit a few shots, next thing you know, we was we, we, we was what, probably down ten, eight, and then next thing you know we were you know, it was a tie game and we was up like one or two, three, something like that. But um, you know, it started to be a back and forth game and we finally, you know, just pulled away from it. NBA player Kevin most resembles, if there's anybody. I know who I got on the top of my head, but if there's somebody you, as far as mentality overall game that you just compare yourself to, I'd probably say Kevin Durant, which is funny. Um, uh, I, I watched him since Coach Barnes was coaching him at Texas, and you know, since then he just he really always been my favorite player. You know, growing up. The irony I was gonna say Russell Westbrook as really? far as mentality, yeah, yeah. as far as. Getting on teammates yeah. <laughs> as far as mentality in game, I was gonna yeah. say Russ. All right, when we come back, we'll have more with your favorite ball, Kevin Pop. If you're looking to book me for an interview video or by phone, if you're looking to have your music or your skill featured on my daily podcast, if you're looking to book me for a speaking engagement to help motivate some kids, if you're looking to have me rock some of your clothing to help promote your brand. Make sure you hit me up at booking at Again, that's booking at